All right, guys, and we are live here on the Rewind, the Wrestling Rewind channel. Of course, you're listening to Phoenix Night 2.5 FM. Thank you for sticking with us. Some, uh, some technical issues, loads of technical issues, honestly. Um, so, yeah, thanks for joining us. And we are um, here every single week. So, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. And it's a great day for wrestling, everyone. Welcome back to the only show hosted by people who don't hate wrestling. This is fantastic. Um, and also welcome to our, in theory, and also welcome to our new home here on the Wrestling Rewind channel itself. We'll, of mm. course, still be backed up under to no media, but mm. a little bit easier for you to find us. All you have to put in your little search queue on Google there, or YouTube is Wrestling Rewind, and you'll be able to pull up our YouTube channel. So we're excited about that, trying to make things a little bit more accessible, accessible for you to find us in particular. And I got to say, Dara, I'm even more excited because we covered a WCW pay-per-view this week that is, wow, you're amazing. Never, you're never picking a pay-per-view again. One of the best pay-per-views no, of all time, easily. No, it's not. You're never Wait, are you pay- serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I love this. No, no. It was... This is amazing. Oh, it was, it was ropey, dude. It was very, <laughs> very ropey. I was just, I was watching the whole time. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know? I didn't think it was bad though. I thought I thought like there were some good moments in it. Like there were more good than bad. Um, there you go. See, see, this is why I shouldn't be banned from picking pay per views because eventually they're going to get better and better. Like it was, I, w- I would say it was better than the last one, which was, you know, all kinds of horrific. <laughs> World War Three. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so much worse. But I just, I just had really good memories of this one in my mind, and uh, they held up. <laughs> no they did not <laughs> I mean, how dare you might have. how dare you <laughs> um, so guys if you're joining us in the chat please do uh, comment below and we'll be able to uh, read them but man oh, I don't know Like, so what was interesting about the show what was interesting about the show was that it was in 1999 and it was in mm-hmm. January so this was the show that came directly after Starcade, which is when Goldberg Obviously, his his um, undefeated streak was gone, right? Ugh. And it and it was beaten in <laughs> the worst way possible uh, via st- a stun gun and then shenanigans. Yes. Also, what's interesting about this is this whole time period, the NWO had come back. Mm-hmm. So the NWO had were gone; they were defeated, and that was it. But then they decided to snake their way back. So all throughout this night, it was just kind of like, oh, we got we got this, uh, you know, the end of the order coming back. And then the commentators had to explain why. Uh, but the funniest part of the night for me was um, with Scott Hall, um, where they're like, yeah, and we got the, uh, and was it Bruce, Bruce Buffer? Was it Bruce, Bruce Buffer? Yeah, Bruce Buffer. Did the My, no, no, oh, Michael, yeah. Michael Buffer. Sorry, oh, Michael, Bruce, yeah, because yeah. he has the UFC and he does yes. the one that says. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, no, no, so, he doesn't do UFC. His brother Bruce does UFC. Does, yeah, Michael's Michael, the one that does. Let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, and he's the one that does. We know uh, our history, yeah. folks. But what, <laughs> you know, Scott Hall's entrance. He was talking for like two and a half minutes. It was fantastic. It was, it was like I hate a, a so founding much. member of I the former tag so. team champions, the Outsiders, a founding member of the original NWO, a founding member of the Red and Black, also known as the Wolf Pack, and. <laughs> It was it was dire. How many accolades Absolutely. do you need? Like, <laughs> well, it's just like you could just say, "Hailing from such and such, it's Scott Hall." Right. That would have been enough, right? It would have been enough. But I mean, I loved it. And okay, so yes, I agree with you. It's kind of a bit absurd, but man, the one thing about WCW that I I miss that we don't get in WWE, and obviously it's because it's kind of his little trademark thing, mm. but. It is fun to hear let's get ready to rumble before the main event, isn't it? No. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Uh, you, can't, no. you can't you can't uh, destroy no. everything about this show. That was that's fun. No, no. I it was the least you know, well, I think what annoyed me most about that is like he got paid thousands for that. Like we're talking serious money. Yeah. He was yeah. one of the he was one of the WCW's biggest 
biggest ex- expenses yeah <laughs> and you're like why like i have to say um it's awesome think, man what's wrong been, with you what is wrong with you it's been a while since, like hearing let's get ready to run it, oh it's gosh, been a while it's... since i've seen wcw so i haven't actually like kind of like actual like late wcw this is late stage wcw right. and a couple of things i like so i kind of want to be positive because we like to be positive here so the first thing i really like the music i thought the music was super grungy mm-hmm. and i forgot how like because it literally was just Jimmy Hart by himself making this up. And I'm like, yes. oh, you know, you did the best you could. And I kind of liked it. I love the presentation. Although then I start getting like AEW flashbacks. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, but we can't get to separate. Yeah. This is this is the original. I know. This is what was I copied. Know. I know, I know. But it you was, can it really. It actually good. You can really see it. Like, you're like, oh, AEW are just mm-hmm. pulling this off. Um, Except AEW doesn't even pull it off as well. No, they don't. They don't. There's like a weird charm to WCW, which you're like, actually, this is really good. There's, um, there's a cool charm. I like that the NWO in the logo for, was kind of was, yeah was out. It was yeah, scratched like spray out, yeah. painted out. Yeah, that was good. That was cool. I liked cool. Um, I liked the way they replayed stuff. You know, where it's kind of like a rewind graphic. Yes. Yeah, that was cool. I was like, those little things are really good. But you know what? What I liked about most of this was this. It really felt different. It was a really, you know, you watch the mm-hmm. BWF and then you watch this and you're like, there's no way you're watching the same product. It's not even close, you know, and that's mm. for good and bad. Um, some things that, some ob- observations, some like um, surface level of, um, mm-hmm. ob- observations. <laughs> so many old guys. <laughs> you yeah. You, you watch you watch WWF and you have The Rock. At the same time, right? You have The Rock, you have Stone Coast Steve Austin, Triple H, Undertaker, Mankind. At this time, remember, it was Mick Foley and The Rock. They were mm-hmm. having their big feud and they'd have their infamous attempted murder match uh, a couple of days from this point, you know? And you're just like, wow, WCW really were banking on talent who were past their sell by day five years at this point, you know? And um, that's one thing that I. <laughs> I kind of forgot. I was like, really? Oh, yeah, but this is, you know, this is WCW. So, you know, that was one thing. Another thing was a lot of the, we would be getting to the point now where the outsiders are going to leave. Jericho would be in WWF Mm -hmm. in five months. Uh, Benoit, um, just on this card, Benoit, Saturn um, would both be gone. They would be in WWF a year later. And th- this card does contain an awful lot of jobbers, and it does contain an awful lot of jobbers. And it does but contain I don't think an anybody. Op- I don't think that anybody is a bigger jobber than whoever wrote the Wikipedia article. Yeah, they leave out because they leave out a lot. They leave out. No, can we lot. just? I'm just going to read this because it's this is two sentences and this needs to be read. And if you wrote this and you're listening to this podcast, don't ever listen to us again. Um, <laughs> This is the story. This is under storylines on Wikipedia for this. The event featured wrestlers from pre existing scripted feuds and storylines. Wrestlers portrayed villains, heroes, or less distinguishable characters in the scripted events that built tension and culminated in a wrestling match or series of matches. That's, yeah, that's, you know, that doesn't give you thanks, Wikipedia. That you didn't even have the effort to put in. (laughs) Well, let's see who wrote that. Oh, I can't even pronounce that name, but it comes from a, a book called Hell Pro Wrestling Works. So obviously this is someone who actually didn't How watch the show. Well, clearly they don't even know. Yeah, they, yeah, don't, they, they just... don't know. It's, well, he, he's not wrong. Ed something. I'm not going to say his second name, but <laughs> we're just going to call him Ed. Friend. He might not be wrong, but what I want to know is if I follow this and I follow through this kid's post history, if we find out that he's done this for multiple WCW cards throughout history. Well, here's the thing. It, it just shows you how unsuccessful WCW was at this point, where that nobody's WWE... noticed it until <laughs> us right now. <laughs> well, not even that. It's like you go to the WWF one. You, I guarantee, you go to Raw Rumble 1998. You're going to have a detailed breakdown of exactly what happened on that show. Oh yeah, but, that, but that's because stuff actually happened on that show. <laughs> Very little happened on the show, and that I, that's the biggest takeaway from this. This show, you know what? This really felt like a modern WWE show because, like, you could watch it. And you'd be entertained. You might get one or two things out of it, but you could just not watch it. And it's no consequence. Like there was literally nothing of consequence mm. on the show. And also something I really want to talk about. And I don't know if you got the, got that kind of feel from it. Well, I did get that feel. 
I made a note about something along those lines that specifically yeah. said, like, this is one of the best shows that you'll watch and then completely forget that you ever watched. Yeah, that's it. Like, it's it, it's a very enjoyable show, but nothing happens. Like, you know, right. there's there's no real consequence to it. It's just kind of, well, there you go. Except mainly the main event, but we'll get to that. Right, so let's start things off. So this comes to you from, well, came from you, you know, 20 years ago, from West Virginia, uh, which I've never been to. I don't know what it's like. It seems nice. It's nice. Um, it's nice. Tony Schiavone, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Mike Tanay. It's a great commentary commentary team. My favorite commentary team. Can I just say I love any time that Mike Tanay is there. Um, Sounds well, I, phenomenal. Yeah, he's great. You know, and it's, it's all top of the game. I kind of wish that WWE took Mike Tanay and Tony Schiavone and put them with JR. That would have been cool. At, like hmm. at their peak, that would have been a cool team to have. But um, yeah, it was really good. I hate me, Gene Oakland. Oh, how dare you? I cannot stand them. How um, dare you? Get I out of here. I don't like them. You're fired. I, no, I don't like them. Fired. Um, it's same with uh, Cody Rhodes. Hate them too. Those two. Wait, wait, just... wait. What? That one I could understand. I, the other is an atrocity to even be saying, man. No, no. Bo, Bo are just terrible. Bo have x heat with me. I'm like, just go away, please. Um, <laughs> wrong. Okay. That's so wrong. So we had our standard kind of uh, set. By the way, have you ever seen the original Sold Out from 1987? No. Oh, we're going to cover that next. That is next week. Oh, oh, oh. so all of a sudden WCW is in vogue here on the wrestling. No, no, it's because you have to see what they've done to it, right? So the first Sold Out was kind of like ECW One Night Stand, where it was his own thing. It was a bad thing, but it was his own thing. It was NWO, right? It was the first one, and then the second one was like... Just the thing, and then this yeah. one was and supposed this to be was... just WCW. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I caught so, that storyline. Yeah, so that was it. But when you actually see it, you can see why they never had another NWO show. So I thought this was kind of weird to like have this. I think I've heard some stories. I think I've yeah, heard wait, some stories. wait till you yeah. see it. Wait till you see okay. it. So that's why it's okay. a thing. It's not good, but it's something to worth, to worth seeing. So when I was watching this initially, I was like, wow, this feels like you know the the one night stand show that they had in like 2008, which had nothing mm-hmm. got to do with anything. That's what it's kind of felt like. It was like, oh, this whole over from a bygone age, from a time immemorial, right? So that was that was kind of weird. But um, how bizarre is that for something that's only four years old? I mean, NWO debuted in 1995. This is 1999. Mm. Well, it ran its course, man. Like it really ran its quickly. course, yeah. really quickly. Um, I mean, we're not talking about a ten-year gap between One Night Stand and ECW. Nope. Oh, no, we're talking five years. Hmm. So the first match opened up with Chris Benoit, which I have to say the match itself was fantastic. Really good opener. And Mike Enos. <laughs> and that lad is a jobber to the stars. And what I'd say is around this time period, watch the jobbers because they're usually somewhat famous, either Chris Daniels or AJ Styles. Very they, just, they just randomly show up and there's those guys from the Indies who you'd know. So always watch the jobbers because they're usually someone who becomes famous a couple of years later. Mike Enos, I don't think he was famous. Um, I, don't, I don't recall him doing anything. He, he was I remember. No. He, he was he was a solid bag of meat for a Benoit, solid bag of meat for Benoit to beat around the ring for a little while. Benoit was vicious in the nineties. Uh, oh oh my goodness! But also this would be two years. Uh, sorry, a year away from him debuting. So this is mm-hmm. like rabid, rabid, rabid Wolverine. You know. Um, and he was there, total package. You know, he really was oh, yeah. just, you know, he should have been in the main event, <laughs> not Goldberg and Scott Hall. You can see why this company was making the wrong decisions because who they had in their opener was like, should have been one of their main stars, right? So it's fair. It was a great little 10 minute match. Um, very fun. Really enjoyed it. The next match, not so much. But before we get to that, what did you think about this opener? No, no I, I enjoyed the opener. I, like I said, I thought it was really intense all the way around i was surprised by it um it's hard when i don't necessarily remember a specific wrestler or I'm, that might be unfamiliar to them like am i going to enjoy this match that they're in speaking of mike ennis but i liked it i thought yeah, that he performed too. well and i nothing stands out for me in the match other than just how vicious just how vicious benoit was with those chokes yeah My goodness and and the crippler crossway he's never looked so vicious, you know, where he locked right. it in, and that was it. It was, it really was kind of you. Although, from from what we know now, you know, from I'm not talking obviously about the obvious thing, but from what we know about his mindset at this point in time, 
they were annoyed mm-hmm. to be there. They were frustrated that they're not yeah. being overlooked or they're being overlooked and they're not. So they did kind of have something to prove. And you can see it. Well, you can just, feel it in this match. Yeah. There's, there's that intensity there. And you're like, oh, you know, this guy's going to go out and kill someone, you know. And Well, not just that. Matches, oh, what a weird way to phrase that there. Um, but not just <laughs> I'm, that. I'm trying, um, to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to look at it. Yeah, I, I get what you're doing. Not, yeah. I know. But yeah. looking at it in its context, though, we also have to, we, we both watched the Vice series on this. And so mm. seeing later in the card, we'll see Miss Elizabeth with Lex Luger. And that could not have been yes. easy on Chris Benoit either. So, oh my gosh, just everything Absolutely. that must be going through his head on this night. Absolutely. It was, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack in this. A lot of stuff that we know from the Vice series, from books and all that kind of stuff. And it's just weird to see, like, and he'd still go out and have this incredible match. If you guys haven't seen this, check out the show pretty much solely for this match. I'd say if you, if you just want one match to pick from it, this is probably the best one. Also, the main event's really good. The main event is really good. Um, so it's it's bookended quite well. Okay, um, well. The next match was like atrocious. <laughs> I, I mean, it's Norman Smiley. What yeah. do you expect? And I would, I, I like, I found, I think Norman Smiley found his feet a couple of years later uh, on now, the. Though. On the indies, and also, you know, when he'd had the garbage matches, I right. think that was kind of his like stick. Doing a straight match with Chavo Guerrero, oh, it wasn't good. Um, Chavo did not impress me at all. No, in this match. he didn't. I, I didn't even realize it was Chavo. It was he looks so weird. He looks weird, off yeah. about him. I don't know what it was. I think, it's, I think it's his face or his hair it looks kind of off, and I'm like, you don't. We're just like used Chavo to Guerrero. seeing him 20 years in the future. And so going back, it's like, who is that dude? Maybe that's that what Chavo's. Yeah. One thing I wanted to touch on that we were kind of hinting at in the previous match, though, um, something I noticed more about WCW than WWF is it feels like you can kind of tell the real life storylines that are going on behind the scenes spilling out into the ring and not in a good way. Yeah, it's because there's no characters in WCW. They're right. just themselves. <laughs> or sorry, and let, that... me, let me rephrase that. The characters that should, the people that should have characters don't. And right. the ones that um, do doesn't really matter. For example, the luchadors, there's no real point of them being luchadors because nobody cares about their character because they're not doing anything other than having incredible matches. But Incredible matches. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get to that. Uh, unbelievable match. But uh, Lex Luger and Conan, like, you're like, you guys just don't like each other. Like, legitimately, there's just that mm. kind of heat, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, Norman Smiley and Chavo, absolute match that your life will not be affected either way. And I felt bad because it had a tough act to follow and it failed miserably, as did Fit Finley and Van Hammer. By the way, Van uh-huh. Hammer. Why, ha- yeah, wh- why did this match have 15 minutes? Almost 16 I, minutes. I it was don't a, know. It was the second longest match on the card. I, I don't, don't get that I, at all. I don't know. But I was happy when it was over and then straight into <laughs> Fit Finley. Cool. <laughs> Look, I was excited to see Fit Finley. I'm like, oh, cool. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Fit Finley in a while. And it was kind of like again, very solid technical match with a guy who <laughs> was called Van Hammer, which I appreciated. I thought that name was cool. Right. He looked like a jobber. And I was just like, this is like watching a shotgun match from the same time period on WWE, right? Or right, you right. Know, something like that, where you're like, Yeah, they're having a competitive match, but it doesn't mean anything. It's just no. What's the point? And it well, felt that's like, the it's the absence of storylines. Like we've mm. been carping so much on how WWF has these storylines that interweave throughout the night, and they did do that to an extent only with the main event. But there was no build up for each individual match in terms no. of okay, this is why you should care, and this is what's been happening. It was just like, and here's two guys that are going to wrestle. Great. Yeah, it, it's so modern WWE where it's like here's the <laughs> yeah. guys who are going to have a match. Okay, go. You're All like, right, and you're off. And you're like, why? Like, why? Why does Fifth Finley hate Van Hammer? Oh, because. <laughs> so the this whole does. time, the whole time I was sitting there, and yeah, like you know, I love the way Shivani presents the show. Uh, obviously, having Mike Tanay there calling all the moves and stuff—it's great. But there's no reason to watch the show. There's nothing kind of hooking me into watching. I was just like, I have to watch it because we're covering it later. <laughs> you know, and that was just kind of like, yeah, and, and the well, match wasn't bad. And the worst oh, part, sorry, before you jump in, the yeah. worst part was the matches weren't bad, they just didn't mean anything. <laughs> it was just, uh, at no point were they telling the story. I couldn't tell you why they were fighting each other. And that's, I, I, I think, think that, the worst, I, I yeah. think that fundamentally, I think that fundamentally 
goes against what wrestling's supposed to be, right? It's a memorable drama, intrigue, mm-hmm. psychology. Yeah, I mean, I think the sad part of it is exactly what you're saying. I mean, I watched this on Monday, originally thinking we'd be recording on Tuesday. It's now re- recording on Friday, obviously. And if you're listening in Ireland, hi, it's Tuesday. I just confused you all. Um, but time my travel. point being, <laughs> time travel. Um, my point is that I've already forgotten about like several of these. Like I do not remember anything that happened in the Fit Finley match, and that this is only three days from having watched it. It was like a good I have match. my notes I can look at, but like it was a mentally good match. I've got nothing that's coming it, to mind to it, note it, about it. It was a good match, a very physical match, but that was it. It told not like yeah. th- they told a story in the ring, as far as Fit Finley was kind of to come from behind Babyface. But neither right. one of them are babyface because the crowd didn't care. You know, it's just like, okay. And uh, the worst, the thing about this was, even though so far we've had two good matches and one kind of mid match, the crowd was kind of just there because there was nothing kind of keeping them mm. going. What I think could have, what you know, if I was booking this show, obviously you'd tell a better story, but you should have given them something. Some kind of, like the, the arrangement of this, uh, you know, move the luchadors up to the front. Maybe turn the fifth Finley Van Hammer match into a hardcore match, and then you have a bit more things to play with. The crowd can kind of get into it, and you kind of carry oh. them through the next bit. I, I I do like having the cruiser weights because this was something WCW consistently did, where you'd have the cruiser weight division featured near the end of the card, and I do actually like that. Um, I, like, I don't know if this card like needed more gimmick matches, though. I mean, it had it didn't have many though. a lot. It, it didn't. Had, it didn't really. It had, it had three. Yeah, but not where they were needed. And I'll, I'll explain. Thirty-three percent of the matches on this card were gimmick matches. How many more do you need? Something to make that fifth Finley match interesting. Anything. All I don't right, care what. Right. You know, that was, anything. Shelly on a pole. Well, actually, no way, because that happens later on. Sorry, never. <laughs> See, I cannot. I actually, we've just discovered something. We've just discovered something. <laughs> is this, this rule is thirty-five? <laughs> no, this is the process that Russo went through. When he was hired. <laughs> oh my God. He I was explain lo- this process. He was logically booking what you think would work based on how the show ran before. He would look, he, he probably looked at these shows and said, right, what would I do? What to make it more successful? And then booked in that way. Nobody mm-hmm. told him to cut the garbage out and he just ran full tilt into it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. This is how it happened. Shows He's like, like this. well, yeah, it's a successful company. I'll just yeah. keep doing what's been successful I'll just keep for doing what's them. What's been successful? We'll kind of shake it up. A ratings, bit. ratings did go up under Russo. Let's not forget that. That's, That's true. worth noting. That's true. It's worth but noting. Anyway, the next match was Bam Bam Bigelow defeat, who defeated Wrath. Now Wrath looked awesome, and Bam Bam yeah. Bigelow is awesome. Very awesome. This match went on for nearly ten minutes. And I do not it recall. Did. And I do not recall one one good part of the whole match. <laughs> uh, you know, big guys moved around. Yeah, it was it was very uh, for anyone who didn't see it. It was very Undertaker. Um, mm, big show. Big show. Yeah, Arcane. Mm, big show. Or Arcane, you know, yeah. two or it wasn't anybody. A, big show. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was your big show match without big show because remember they'd actually lo- they would lose. They've actually lost the big show. At this right. point, he was under contract now for WDB and would make his debut a month later. So I think they were kind of hoping that Rat would be that kind of filler. By the well, way, he they, was filler. <laughs> but by the but the way they <laughs> built him, I have to say though, right? It was 1999, but the show looked really, really not 1999. If that makes sense, that does make sense. And for those of you, you might know him. You might know Wrath best as Adam Bomb. That's worth yep. mentioning. Yeah, that's that was good, kind of good, his more good famous. Catch. Yeah, um, but yeah, what I'm gonna mean is like when you watch WWE from the actually there, the early actually there, you can tell where it is, and particularly by the mm-hmm. time we get to 1999, you're like, oh, absolutely, that is very much of its time. With this, it's less so. It's more just kind of nebulous late 90s, mm-hmm. 2000s. But it could even yeah, be this, this could be 97. It could be 97, but it, it, it also could be 2005. Mm. You know, and actually, well, this, well, let's say 2003, because this wasn't in HD. Well, let's say it could also be 2020, because <laughs> it's AEW, right? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, don't, don't do uh, it. Don't yeah. do it. So, yeah, it just, but, but I kind of like it. I think the WCW 
uh, presentation really works for them in a way that it's kind of timeless in its mm. own way. Um, and it's funny, the actual presentation has more character than the show, <laughs> than the characters, yeah. which that's, is a shame. That's very true. Which is a shame. Because, um, like, you could see that they had, like, you know what it is? It's like, you know, when you were younger and you'd have, like, one of your mates would have, like, a better ring or something like that with your action figures or a good setup, but they, they would have like terrible figures or whatever. And that's kind of what, ring, yes. and that's kind of what it's like. It's like, they have this great setup, this great ring, this all this kind of stuff, but they just don't know how to put a show together or just love these specific mm-hmm. toys. And it's like, we're going to play with these toys. And you're like, but you have all these other ones. And it's like, no, no, we're going to play these ones. And that's kind that of what a great it was. Analogy. I like that a lot. Yeah. And that's kind of what it felt like. It was like, Oh, but Chris Van Wall is having a really good match. Let's no, 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 no. I want Hulk Hogan, but Hulk Hogan's already no, no Hulk Hogan. Like, <laughs> okay, right, fair enough. <laughs> so poor Rat and Big Show. I felt bad for them because they tried and he put Big on a... Show. You're just subliminally <laughs> putting Big Show in this oh, match. Oh man. Okay, uh, Batman Bigelow and Rat. Sorry, it, it was like watching Big Show. I'm sorry, um, and not in a good way. <laughs> Uh, I felt bad for him because they tried to put on a good match and it just wasn't. <laughs> it just was like guys doing stuff and it went on for 10 minutes. Um, then we had a really weird segment. Uh, this segment was strange. That turned into a match. It was Lex Luger and Conan out of nowhere that became a match with Miss Elizabeth who didn't look like me. I was like, that's not Miss Elizabeth. That can't be Miss Elizabeth. And obviously it was, you can see how kind of rough she was at this point. Yeah. And things went downhill. Yeah, they did. And you can yeah. kind of see it now. You know, it really was like, oof. but the weirdest part wasn't the match itself. It was the kind of build up to it where it wasn't a match, but then kind of became one. Mm-hmm. And then all the NWO to show up and have a beat down. And you're like, Okay, and remember the whole gimmick of this was the NWO went there. It was the red and black, right? It was the red and black, but yeah. then you still had the LWO, which was awesome. gone. But they <laughs> reappeared at some point, which was bizarre. Yeah, I don't even know. If, could could you do that nowadays? Could you have an LWO? I feel like you couldn't. I think you get canceled, guys. Let us know in chat. Would would you, would. would you be canceled with the LWO nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that you know Twitter would be I like. Feel like- Oh my god, it's so racist! You're like, what are you talking about? It's just... But then there's retribution. Oh, well, I guess yeah. if you're on the right side, if you're on the other, if you're on, a, you know, what I'm trying to say, people. Yeah, if if you're on the the the, the culturally correct side, based on what your opinion is, <laughs> that would be thing. But retribution is. I hate one thing, man. Watching modern movie, not to go on and around, but I'm so glad we don't talk about it because oh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. it's no Speaking sense. of bad. Up next was Chris Jericho. No, I oh, okay. So, what did you think about this beat down? Like, because this was halfway through the show, and when it happened, I was like, okay, I understand what they're doing, I understand why they're doing it. They're trying to recapture this NWO thing. Their whole mm-hmm. plan probably was get the NWO back, push it, and then kind of undo some of the damage that was done. The big storyline was they brought Hulk Hogan back because he was gone for a while. So him coming back was important. And then obviously getting the bells back from Goldberg at Starcade was really important. Also, remember, on the show, important thing to know, no world champion. The world champion was not shown in a match. No. At all. I didn't even even catch that. I probably should have when watching it. No, no US champion. (laughs) No, (laughs) no tag team titles. (laughs) There, but there was a cruiserweight championship. There so was. It was slack. the only championship defended was the cruiserweight That's champion. Right. But you know, sometimes you don't need championships. No, yes, I you don't. Do. You do. Yes, you do. You, do. you absolutely you do. do. There's no here's, excuse. Actually, here's the that. thing. You know what would have been good, right? Any of those matches that we mentioned earlier on, if they mm. had been for a belt, at least that would have mm. me- meant something. If it had been for, God forgive me, a rating like uh, AEW do, where they have the rankings. Ugh. At least I know, but it would have been something instead of just here's some guys doing stuff, you know. Um, like you could have put yeah. the you could have had like the US belt on Benoit, he could have went out there, felt you know, your man could have fell over a couple of times, and you know, it would have been grand. You know, Norman Smiley, they eventually figured out just give him the hardcore belt, and then you know, whatever. But this is the thing WWE mm-hmm. had their stratus, their 
their whole thing stratified out where you knew what you were watching at this time in WWE, there was the hardcore belt. You know, we've talked about this European belt, like stuff. Everything kind of felt in its own place and felt in its own pocket. This feels like all over the place because nothing has been spelled out. Nothing has been kind of given to the audience. It's just kind of happening. And it, it's exactly what we, what we'd say about modern WWE. So mm. it sucks. But important thing to notice, there's one title and the world champion no wasn't title. even there. So, he, yeah. so sorry, just one thing for people say about Brock Lesnar not being there. Hulk Hogan was a master of this. The man never worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Except himself. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That was a cut. That was yeah. A deep, deep cut. cut. Right. Deep next cut. match. Next oh, wait, match. You, want, you asked me, you want to know what I thought of the beat down, and then you went oh, on sorry. a rant. Am sorry, I allowed sorry, to actually yes, answer that yes, question? Yes, or thank, you, just... thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Good wrong. Lord. Darren. You have to jump in, Dave. You know this. You know me long enough. Come on. I'm, I'm aware. Speaking of jumping in, follow me on Twitter at the Dave Stevens. I'm, I'm done leaving this till the end of the show. Damn it. Follow me. I need. Follow Dave. We need to get that hashtag going. Hashtag again. save. Hashtag save Dave. It's vital. Um. So, <laughs> um, this match. Uh, oh, so the beatdown. Yeah. So I had was confused. I forgot how absurdly large the NWO was at this point. As in like, and you had the red and the black, and I wasn't sure if they were on the same team going after. They're not supposed because they were attacking each other. This is what this is what confused me about Hogan coming in, right? So yeah. he comes in with the red and black, but he's wearing yes. a white shirt, and it's not yes. until he takes off his his hat that you see his bandana is red. So it's like the unification, I guess. But I was that, absolutely yeah. seen absolutely confuddled is that a word perplexed so, so i was the Just, same I, oh my goodness i was the same and i lived through this right so okay uh, what happened was there was the nwo then it right. split off to the red and black in hollywood right and that's when hollywood was called uh, that's when hulk hogan was called hollywood hogan right, right. that's where it comes from right then they feuded for a couple of months and the whole thing because broke i up. lived through this <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like it's a yeah. war you had a real war <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, look. So Hogan obviously took his faction off, and the Wolf Pack were there, and the Wolf Pack were there all the time. They never went away. So I think this whole storyline was a re- reunification of the whole thing. But they did such a poor job setting that up and making sense of it. Like if this had been WWE at the time, they would have had a video package. They would have had a couple of promos throughout the <laughs> whole night. They would have had you know someone going and be like, "So hey, uh, on Ro- on Nitro last week, we." Uh, you know, we took over, we did this. Uh, the only thing that came close to that was Scott Hall's promo that made no sense. It was just a rambling nonsense. It was just like, you couldn't have just got Hogan to go out and cut a promo or anyone in your, you know, floozy ridden group there to cut a promo. No? Okay. Exactly. Floozy ridden group. Good Lord. They're weird. They were just like random guys who were just, and both Bigelow is the biggest floozy ever. It's such a gimp, <laughs> and it was just like the Hogan. Oh I'm like, oh man, like I don't know, hateful people that buff back. Well, I think he's gas, but you know, he just was such a gimp. Like the whole just being there, and you know. Anyway, so we'll get onto it. It gets worse as we go on, but yeah, strange, strange, strange pacing. That was so a lot. Then like, NWO had a lot of people, in. and this is when I was talking about how like Way the many. back backstage like flows out into the onstage because i mean it was a point where it wasn't just like the nwo was a faction it was mm-hmm. also if you're not in the nwo you're probably not going to get paid as much yeah if you work you're... for wcw so there were like yeah. real life ramifications to whether you were in the cool kids club or not and i yeah. just i don't know it's, it's weird just... it's weird to go back and watch after we've read memoirs and autobiographies and stuff it wasn't something that would be conducive to a good working environment i'd imagine no so but anyway the next match i did quite enjoy a fair bit because it was the only one that had a storyline really and jericho (laughs) one thing that really like peeved me off peeved me off and you probably didn't notice it but i did okay jericho's music was not that okay i was going to ask you about that because they used break the walls down but that was not his wcw music it was not it was not it was basically a, a a weird version of Even Flow by Pearl Jam that was ripped right. off by Jimmy Hart. So I'm like, why did you? And I have to say, they actually managed to make it work really they well. Did. 
Like it kind of. I, I honestly thought like, oh, am I wrong? Yeah. I, all I, these years, I thought this was okay. I, maybe he was using. I, I, I honestly did too. I was like, oh, so maybe that's why he had the reaction when he came to WWE. But then I'm like, wait, no, I lived through this. I remember this was different. I had like, <laughs> I had like a Mandela effect moment where I'm like, wait, no, this is not, this is not right. And then I'm like, oh no, they just dubbed it in, but they dubbed it in really, really well. So yeah. Fair play. But here's the weird thing. But Chris Benoit they didn't do that for his music. They didn't pop in his music. Fifth Finley didn't pop his music. And Chavo Guerrero didn't pop his music. It was just so arbitrary. It was like, eh, there you go. Jericho. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, like, I, I, there's probably some explanation in some yeah. archive somewhere for this. I'd love to hear it. Well, I, I can know. probably tell you the real the real reason because Pearl Jam are like, we're going to sue you if you don't get rid of that. And they're like, okay. <laughs> that wouldn't, so that's yeah. probably what happened. Uh, <laughs> That's probably because here's the thing. Actually, I actually there was a there's this video on Nerd to Know Media on the channel now. Uh, gladiatorial combat and the wrestling, right? It's a video we did like yes. eight years ago in in Rome, and I actually really like it. If you haven't checked it out, do. But that got hit with a copyright strike because it actually had that that song in it. Oh, and I had to go in and I re-edited it and stuff like that, so it's right, gone right. now. But that actually that hit that copyright thing is quite aggressive. So that's probably what it was. And it you was, think? yeah, it was retroactively <laughs> though, because it was there for like six years and wasn't, and now just is. So mm-hmm. if you guys haven't checked it out, go over to the Nathan Media channel. Uh, we'll link it below and you can go over and have a look. Um, of it, because I actually think that video holds up quite well, but I have experienced how aggressive copyright is on that song. So that's probably what happened. That would be interesting. Uh, the storyline with this one, though, it's weird because it's okay. weird. Yeah, it's a weird. Perry Saturn's are Perry Saturn's already wearing dresses on his own for yes. whatever reason. So loser must wear a dress. It's like okay. I, my immediate reaction was, well, clearly Chris Jericho is going to lose because it's not a big deal if Perry Saturn has to wear a dress. Well, one thing, right? But then Jericho wins. So well, what one, the heck was the point of this match? Okay, so you and I had the exact same thought process. So I'm just going to park it there for one second. Here's the weird thing about the thing, right? So Jericho comes out and he has the whole, you know, Rufus thing. Mm -hmm. And then Shivani is explaining, oh, initially it was just supposed to be if Perry Sarton lost, but now it's either one of them lose. And I'm just like, that's a really weird thing to say on top of Mm -hmm. also what you've just said, where it's like Perry Sarton was just doing that anyway. So it's like, what? And then in the match, the character development is that the referee is actually in on it the whole time. And you're like, what? right, right. What? And, and the whole time, you're just like, none of this was explained. The match <laughs> was actually very good. But you're like, none of this was explained. So you have to kind of piece This is why we need good it. promo packages, yeah. WCW. We don't understand. <laughs> it's, it's like an it's it's like, 20 it's, plus years removed. We give us a break. It's like a match, like, done by Ikea where you have to piece it all together by yourself you know and you're like where does this go <laughs> I have all the bits but I don't know where any of it fits in it's so weird and I'm scanning the, the QR code for the instructions <laughs> I can't just find it me. And now, for air what <laughs> and that was it you know because I, t- I thought there was a decent story in here somewhere and both the guys put on a really good match <laughs> somewhere. Uh, and it's just like I don't know what, what I don't know what it is so it's just like <laughs> okay, so yeah, points to Jericho and Sarton for putting on a very decent match. The only thing that kind of felt that had stakes, but then Jericho lost. Sorry, Jericho won. If Jericho had lost, it would have made more sense. It's like, okay, well, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, weird man, I don't get it. Would you be canceled for this match, by the way, in 2020? I don't think you could do this match again. Uh, in 2020. I don't think you could do it. I don't think no, you could do it. Do it. No, 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 I think no. it would be, yeah, you could like. You, Here's the thing, WCW wasn't as yep. well yet, it wasn't as egregious as some of the stuff we talked about in WWE where it deserves no, well, that's to be what's canceled. fascinating about this is like <laughs> for a while they, they figured out totally different ways to be offensive. Yeah, but like WWE was in your face, like we're gonna be offensive to be offensive and watch mm-hmm. us because of that. With WCW, it was more like, no, we're just trying to like do our thing. It just happens to be that everything we do is offensive in the long run anyway. Yeah, in some way it's it's more kind of like well, this is just how it is, rather than WWF, where it's like we're going to push all these buttons. And one thing as well but with the science, but one thing as well with the science, it even goes into the crowd because the science I was looking for, mm-hmm. I was like, have we got any, you know, juicy science to find? Or really there was nothing really there. It was all kind of very tame. 
Um, and mm. obviously, King is in there saying morally abhorrent stuff either. So, it was and Dusty like, Rhodes is an uncommentary mumbling. So, yeah. So it was just kind of like you know, I think for all its faults, WCW is still a, mu- a much more wholesome product. And I mean that in in most sincere way possible. It's like if if they had it just out backstage politics. Yeah, if they had it, thing. if they had it just told Hogan to go and you do jump off a cliff and the rest of the NWO, they probably would have been fine. But you know, they didn't. And that was kind of mm. the problem. All backstage stuff was just tearing the show apart. Which is kind of upsetting, but yeah. you know. Anyway, so Jericho's your winner for some reason. Uh, Perry Saturn, you know, is still Perry Saturn. So, you know, whatever. Good match. Fun yeah. match. By the way, I did really enjoy when Benoit came out and Giovanni was like, "Chris Jericho is the best wrestler," and and it was like, "That's Benoit," and you're like, "Oh yeah, he's really good too," and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> watching the show. Shivani, come on, man. It's, How did you? He's just How reading from a script. He's reading from That's a script. Reading exactly. from a yeah. script. Okay. So when did Russo take over? Uh, it was late sept- 90. Yeah, it, it, was, it was, no, it was September 1999. Well, this would have been before. Yes. So this pay per view was before Russo. This was under Bischoff. Yeah. Right. So why, why were you blaming Russo for the stun gun ladder match? Oh no, you were blaming him for the shillelagh on, on a, a pole. I uh, know, Matt. Okay, Let, no, you. much later on, everything would be on a pole. Right? Yes, everything yeah, would be on a pole. WCW two thousand is horrific. So okay, <laughs> the whole you. thing is. I just, wanted, just, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah, like, no, fair, what we're seeing fair. here is it's it's worth saying. Like this is we're seeing the dip that caused them to have to bring Russo in. Yeah. Well, we're, well, we're seeing we're two things. Seeing... We're, we're, we're seeing the dip, but then when we do a show from WWF around this time, you see how good WWF was at the time. So it's a double whammy. It's like mm-hmm. WWE really it's found their feet. Yeah. yeah, WWE found their feet while WCW was going on a dip, and that combination really kind of shows you what happened later on. Why what happened later yeah, on? Happened. Definitely fair. Pure desperation, definitely you know. Fair. Um, the next, you can absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like it makes sense, right? Um, the next match. This was really good. Really good. good. I, and look, we're 45 minutes in. We're going into overtime, guys. So it just it just has to Are we? We're close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we might. We'll see. Uh, it was a fun match. The only match with, with stakes. Uh, I love Billy Kidman. I Now I remember why I love Billy Kidman. His shooting star press is... The worst beautiful. shooting star press in the history of How? the world. How? It looks so good. It looks so fun. What are you talking about? It's like horrible. It. Like How do you it. like it? I like it. It's, I think it's great. Okay, let me break this down for you. To, let me set the stage for you. It's about uh, 2004, 2005. I'm not talking about 2004, 2005. Range. I'm talking Now, just bear with now. me. Just okay, bear okay. with me. Right, I have okay. a point to make. I, okay. make. I have a point to make. Paul London is in the WWF or WWE at this time. Yeah, this makes He's sense. tag team partners with sense. Billy Kidman. Right, right. They have a match. I think it was for the Cruiserweight title. And they both in this match do a shooting star press. Billy Kidman does his typical, I'm just going to kind of flip over and flop and good luck to my my opponent if they don't end up injured. Because my knees will probably end up in their face. I have no grace behind this move. I have no control over where it lands. I'm just going to try it. And then you get to see London do one. And London goes up and he does the full body extension. It's got a snap to it. He flows through the air it's better than matt seidel's or evan Bourne, whatever you want to call him i mean it's just it's just a thing of pure beauty and i go back in time and i think okay well maybe billy kidman and you, you know we'll later go on to learn that london wasn't allowed to use the shooting star press because of billy kidman being in the company even though he would end up being retired which is can bizarre I, and of can itself. i can i explain why i like it no no you can't so if we go back in time to 1999 i'm thinking to myself well maybe billy kidman used to be good at the shooting star press maybe he had some grace maybe he had some accuracy no it's pure luck that his opponents did not get a concussion every single time he did this move it was an unsafe maneuver to do and there was more talented people who could do it that weren't allowed to do it because he was the one who had as his signature move done Okay. Say you're say you're point useless. Taken. Point yeah, taken. Say you're useless. Point that you're going to add on here. That's well, not going to matter. Okay. So in context of the time, Dave, which is always important, 
The reason why I liked it is because it came from Raven's flock and his kind of nonchalant way of doing it was part of the character. I just don't think he could do it any better. I don't think he had to. And also, what, six years on? You don't think he had to. Hold on, if you're doing something for six years, night after night, actually at this point, probably eight years, night after night after night, you're not really going to care that much. So... Yeah, but he always know. did it this way. I've never seen him do it in a way. Well, man, even when it's... he does, even when he does it amazing, there's like an amazing shot where he does it to the outside of the ring at one point. That was cool. I can't remember when. It's cool, but it still looks terrible. I mean, why do you think Ricochet's shooting stars are so pretty? Because he puts a lot of time into learning how to do the flip. Billy Kidman, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like a fat kid at a swimming pool who goes on the diving board and is like, dude, I can totally do a flip. And just kind of belly flops when he tries to do a backflip. I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was impressive. So it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to have a different <laughs> opinion. Uh, Ray Mysterio <laughs> was okay. Uh, <laughs> you, and you, know, you know I felt this strongly about this. Did no, you? I didn't. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah, I, I, very, I have very strong opinions about the shooting star press. But, but the minute you brought up Paul London, I was like, this. okay, now it makes sense. Uh, I was like... <laughs> Uh, initially, I was like, did, hold on, did Billy Kim do something to AJ Styles? And I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, look, a good 15 minute match. Again, this was kind of like a nice lift in the show because, you know, we've had some, eh, but this had some good stakes. It was fun and really nice competitive match. And it was really what it needed. Like, this was oh like, my gosh. Yeah, it really was what it needed. Um, young Juventude, Young Psychosis. Oh, we absolutely. forget how good they used to yeah. be. And Mysterio as well. Like, it's, he's still, you know, oh, he's, yeah. he has knees that work. He's not held together by duct tape and look. You know, it's... But even, even Mysterio two years ago, three years ago in the Indies, was wrestling insane matches. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. for whatever reason, there's something about him. He just can keep going. Juventude, I always worry about a little bit because, what? well, he has a very... There's some. There was a story of him in WWE at one point where he tried to win the, the cruiserweight championship when he wasn't supposed to. Well, he just goes into business for himself. Yeah, he went into business for himself and tried to wow. legitimately pin his opponent. Um, he also, <laughs> when Paul London wasn't allowed wow. to get yeah, back to Paul London again, when Paul London wasn't allowed to do the shooting star press, London switched to doing the 450 splash, and Hoventu decided to do it in one of their matches and ended up giving a concussion to somebody by landing incorrectly. So then London got banned from doing the 450 splash too, because they just straight up banned any flips from the top rope. So I just have a bad, you know, bad taste in my mouth when it comes to Hooventude. Really a lot of people in this match screwed over Paul London is my issue. You have to, you're going, well, we're going to have to institute a new rule. When we're talking <laughs> about Benoit, you have to forget what he did. Unless right, it okay. comes up. And when it comes to Paul London, you can't retroactively be angry with people that stuff they did that he did six or seven years after the fact. So you're gonna have a bad time. Like it's just you know, um, the same with Owen Hart. You know, just forget what happened if we watch an Owen Hart match. Um, just for that time as we're doing it, because you'll have a bad time. Now we are 51 minutes, so we're, we're gonna, gonna go into overtime. We are gonna go into overtime. So, You're welcome, Ireland. You'll never hear the main events ever. But well, you, you should be doing is checking us out on our many different platforms. And Dara is going to tell you where you can find us. Absolutely. So if you're checking us out on Phoenix 92.5 FM, thank you very much. We are going to be back to normal streaming. Uh, we're still kind of working out time slots, so we don't know. We will let you know on our social media. We are on NerdToKnowMedia.com, obviously, NerdToKnowMedia YouTube channel, Spotify, all that kind of stuff. But if you want to catch us live, we're on the Wrestling Rewind channel on YouTube. And what's great about that, if you subscribe there, we're able to actually interact with you directly, polls and also uh, community posts. So that's really yes. cool. I didn't even realize we could do that. So we're actually able mm -hmm. to kind of interact with you guys directly on the channel. Um, so when we do kind of figure out a proper schedule and time, we'll let you guys know there. And um, hopefully all the technical stuff has worked out. Also, we're on the True Penny channel. So thank you to James True Penny for that as well. And um, go over and subscribe to his stuff over on Spotify. And we'll be back next week here on Nerd to Know Media, The Wrestling Rewind, Phoenix 92.5 FM. This is The Wrestling Rewind. We'll talk to you after this break, if you're joining us on the stream, or next week, if you're checking us out on Phoenix 92.5 FM. See you in a bit, guys. All right. And we're back. Uh, the shortest break in the history of man. <laughs> um, it was a great break, I thought. It was. It was. I think it was good. Great break. 
So listen, uh, I am going to work on ads at some point. Uh, but, but, you know, whenever, whenever. Well, we finally got around to moving the channel over here, so that's good. Yeah, guys, give, cut us some slack. It only yeah. took us five months. Hey, come on, man. The world Great ended. Progress. The world ended. The world, and I, the world ended, and I had to work through the whole the whole lot of it. So, it just, same. You same, know, it just same. wasn't good. You know, I, I everyone else is like, oh, I had so much time off work. I'm like, really? I did. Who are these people? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I didn't. So it's worked the entire time. I've never been busier. So, uh, yeah, fun time. Anyway, um, yeah, what's great about over here is we can actually do polls and stuff. So I think yes, we'll be able to pull. That's the one advantage people, to this so. this YouTube channel and the, it, yeah. the number of subscribers and views and stuff is it unlocks a lot of features for us. Absolutely. So um, we're going to be able to add more to that as well and make it a bit more interactive for you guys. So thanks for bearing with us. And again, you know, subscribe to both Nerd Snow Media channel and also this one because content goes up on both, but content is different on both. So it's kind of like the NWO, uh, WCW, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. We we are the NWO of yeah, Nerd to Know Media. Uh, um, yeah, we will be aiming for that seven fifteen Eastern slot on Tuesdays, hopefully. Yeah. So we'll, you know, it's gonna be a bit rough for a little bit, but it'll either be Tuesdays or if not, maybe this time as well, because either works fine. We'll figure it out. It's gonna yeah. be a, it's gonna be around this time anyway. I kind of like this a little bit more because it's a bit more chill than it's very Russian. relaxed. I feel yeah. very relaxed tonight. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. The next one, right? And here's the weird thing. So, Kur- it was Ric Flair and David Flair. Now, obviously, again, forget what happened to David Flair. Um, just look at it this way. Right, he did. Yeah. Um, and then Kurt Haney. Oh, no. And- now I remember. Yeah, don't. Don't. See? Oh. See? Yeah, yeah, don't. Don't. See, oh, they used it as a storyline. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. See, oh, I, told- no. I shouldn't I have said know. anything. Yeah, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> it never once crossed my mind while I watched this match. Again, I lived through this, so oh. I remember David Flair before. I don't. I, I remember. I actually remember David Flair from this too. This is one of the things that stood out for me. It was the the main event in this match. Um, so I was actually as a child, I mm-hmm. was silly and excited for David Flair's debut match because I just assumed you know that he would be as awesome as his dad. You know what, though, right? You're not wrong. I was too. And so yeah. were a lot of other people. I remember I had this magazine and my grandparents got it from me. My grandmother got it from me. It was called like Badass Dudes. And it was like this weird indie, indie ultra-violent wrestling magazine. And there was like, it was like you had the WBF magazine and Raw and that, right? But for some reason, we got right. these weird indie magazines where you'd have like, you know when you, when, you know when you see a WWE photograph that isn't from WWE photographers and it's all kind of mm-hmm. black and it's, you know, the lighting isn't perfect. It would right, be full right. of those pictures, right? And that was the mm-hmm. first time that I really kind of saw how graphic the Royal Rumble 1999 match was, right? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it had, like, really grotesque pictures of Mick Foley's head being smashed open, yes. right? Oh, yes. But it also had weird ads, like ads for, like, horror websites. And not websites, but, like, <laughs> stuff you could buy and really cool Undertaker things and that. But the... And ECW, WCW, now. it was actually like a really cool magazine. If you guys remember it, please leave a comment below because I remember that magazine. I don't want to Google badass dudes because, you know, I'm real 34. I'm pretty sure it means something else nowadays. But back then it didn't. And Tommy Dreamer was always in it as well. Tommy Dreamer was in it all the time. So I believe it. It was what it was. But anyway, um, yeah, they made a big thing out of David Flair. Like, a massive thing around this time and obviously this was from 1999 as well so it was from that time period and yeah so when this match happened I was like oh this is going to be great watching it 20 years later do you want to guess what I thought what did you think this happened again this is literally yes the Dominic yes. Dominic match. the Dominic angle with Seth Rollins when I was watching it, I'm like going through my head when I started to right? say that. And I'm wondering, are we so pessimistic? Now? I don't think so. Because we got we got hyped up when we were young and mm. bought in, and it's been ruined for us. I don't know. Like this, I don't know, man. Like David Flair, I think in the way they did it here was okay. Let's let's compare the two, right? I think the way they did it here was better because it actually had some some real real stakes. They didn't have. They didn't blind. They didn't blind uh, Ric Flair. 
right? They just kind of said, right, we right. need we need backup. So already, <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah, they didn't, so, so, so <laughs> they didn't they literally didn't, rip his eye out. Yeah, they didn't. Right. They didn't do all the stupid stuff that they would do in WWE, right? So what I like I about it is it's like you know, f- uh, the Flares are uniting as men to go against this fuck this behemoth of the NWO, right? And I mm. think that's great. And already you're like, okay, it's the underdog story. He's not a wrestler, but he wants to defend his dad. WWE doing it. They already have the, oh, Dominic's doing it because his dad is blind. <laughs> right. It's just, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> and also, David Flair wasn't a wrestler. No, not trained at all, unfortunately. No, no. But, but I, I mean, s- like, in the storyline... He wasn't a wrestler. Right, right. He wasn't right. He wasn't billed as a wrestler. Yeah. Where Dominic is coming out in full gear. Exactly. And... and he's coming out as a wrestler. And you're like, but you're you're shit though. You know? And it's just like well, well, and you know, and we're kind of seeing we're kind of seeing Ric Flair as the president yes. of WCW. So are yeah. they trying to recapture the magic of Shane McMahon being the CEO's son in WWE and actually Maybe. being fantastic? Maybe, but again. Shane McMahon wasn't fantastic yet. He had one match at WrestleMania the year before, for and that was against X Pac, and it wasn't a good match. He hadn't come into his own yet. We're not there yet. So I would say no. Right, but I mean, that's what I'm trying to see. Like, yeah, are they trying no, to one I, up? I, no, no. Because there's a lot of back and forth. There could have been, but I don't think that was that. There was that awareness. I just think it was a pretty good story to tell at the time. It was. Now I will say my biggest complaint about this match and why I like it now. Well, I liked it. Now watch. Okay, I like it. Then having watched it now, mm. time travel. Yeah. Um. But this was a Cody Rhodes match. Yeah, it really was. It this was, was re- that kind of yeah. It was that. It's a very uh, storyline driven with older wrestlers and bringing in the old prestige, and that's what this match was about. It was more about the four horsemen and all, who it, it was all- and wasn't actually in the group. So it, it had that mystique to it that I really liked. Unlike with Cody Rhodes, where then they would do it 20 times in a row yeah. and I get tired with it. This was a one off, which I like. Why well, you said of. it was a Cody Rhodes match, I'd go further and say it was a Randy Orton match. And in uh, early, early, in, early, early Randy Orton, early Randy Orton, Legend Killer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It kind of felt like, felt like that. But as you, I think I had, and that's, you know, because that's what Randy Orton kind of learned from, right? He probably obviously picked all this up. I think right. David Flair was kind of the prototype Randy Orton character where it's like, you're going to learn all this kind of stuff and go off. And the way he works is very similar to it. It shows a lot more in Cody Rhodes. And you're right. This match could be, this match probably will be done next week on him on a dynamite. Hey, dynamite. <laughs> you know, is somewhere. that what that show is called? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's some garbage. Anyway. Um, AW, well, AW hot garbage. I think that's a better name for it. Um, Recycled garbage, <laughs> AW recycled garbage. Um, but yeah, and like, uh, if this had been it, I think that would have been great. But also, what I like about it is because we're watching it in this slice of the show, when WCW were on, they were still really good, even at this point. Because mm-hmm. as I said, we haven't said anything that's like actually categorically bad, we're just saying the stuff that isn't necessarily interesting. Which is sometimes worse because at least if it's bad, it's bad, and you're like, oh, it's bad. But with this, it's like it's not interesting. With this, everything was ready to go. They had the stars aligned. They had a good storyline. They had everyone involved, and then it gets ruined by a, a, a run-in. But the run-in was cool it does too. Get ruined by run, yeah. But what the run-in was kind of cool because it was like, right, you know, we we got the set roll. Like we got the whole set Rollins angle in like what fifth. 20 minutes <laughs> where yeah, it was like, true, true. yeah we, we got the match we got the redemption and then we got the beat down instead of getting it over three nights we got it in 20 minutes all at once all yeah. at once and i'm like oh okay well that's where it went wrong because you could have probably spaced that out but instead hogan had mm-hmm. to come out on top he did so, have to come out. now i will say i noticed you know we, we always talk about how Billy Gunn was an obvious influence to Dolph Ziggler, but I forgot mm. how much Dolph Ziggler acts like his dad and how oh, creepily yeah. he looks like him, especially as Dolph is getting, well, not creepily, I mean, it's genetics, but mm. the older Dolph is getting, the more he looks like Kurt Hennig as well. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's very, very real. And it's so bizarre because 
you know, we know he dies, obviously, and it's, it's horrific. Which is, you know, and that um, was that was the one that actually I was, even though I would say forget what happened, Kurt Hennig is like someone who I always kind of missed not being in yeah, the movie. And then when he came absolutely. back, and then when he came back for like the very short run, I was like, oh, he's only there for like a year. And then he dies and you're like, oh man. So every time I watch him, I'm like, this is so upsetting. Why didn't you just go? It's like with the big boss man. It's like, why didn't mm. you just stay in WWE? It was fine there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, like, it but, yeah. but my point was like, there's actually not that big of a gap between the time that Kerhanig passed away to the time that Dolph Ziggler debuts in WWE. It's I only don't, a course of like five years or so. I don't right? think they're. I don't think they're related, dude. I just think they look a lot alike. Wait, it's not his dad? No, I don't think so. No, I'm just think, making something up over here. I think so, yeah. I don't think they're related. If the are, let us know. Did, but... did he have a dad? Did, does, does Kurt Henning have a son that wrestled that I'm totally mixing up Dolph Ziggler with? Dolph Ziggler looks like his nickname is. That's his name. I know. This so, I don't think they're related. I was just letting you go with it. And I'm like, where's he going with this? My, sorry for hitting my mic. Uh, please... I, I swear he has a son that wrestles. Guys, we're I, I got I got nothing. I got we're, nothing. we're wrestling journalists for 10 years. <laughs> There's nothing. I'm just making crap up. <laughs> anyway, Dave just really, really wants this family unit of Kurt Hennig, Billy Gunn. I don't know why I'm and, so excited. And Dolph Ziggler. I was so into I was so I was like dead on like serious too like this is legitimately what I've been thinking for like 10 years of my I, life I, I just thought you were I just doing my a bit. mind is blown no I just thought you were doing a bit. no my mind's blown I, I was really like thought. I was like I was like where is he going with this this is like this is a very elaborate bit but, you couldn't right. have like sent me a message give me like a heads up like Dave you're, you've, you've lost the plot man <laughs> Anyway. I'm glad this isn't. I'm glad this isn't how we left off on the radio and into overtime because somebody in Ireland would have been like, "Wait, what? What? <laughs> Who am I?" I so I don't. So to, so to clarify, do some research for next week. Yeah. So research definitely. So, okay, so to, cl- just to so, clarify, Mike Awesome was Kenny you... Powers' father. Okay. No, let's Wait, just well, hold on, hold on. Kenny in the Spirit Squad. Cause everybody in the Spirit Squad was. The son of a former wrestler. Is that true? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. The only one was Husky Harris. And that's, yeah. That's, he wasn't yeah. in he was in the Spirit Squad. I give up. <laughs> this is this is why I do the historical context, Dave. <laughs> okay. Moving swiftly on. Moving swiftly on from that. This will be so, taken out of context for years to come, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so we had the main event it's been a long and week of work man. it's fine it's fine um i would have been the same if we had it done on tuesday man my brain was totally fried so don't <laughs> worry i was just like no i need time um so look the stun gun ladder match <laughs> what a name <laughs> what a gimmick stun gun ladder match so, this is the reason that i picked this out to watch i um so I really like to, this so to win a stun gun ladder match but he has he had a son named joe hennig you oh, have... Curtis Axel. There you go. Curtis Axel was Curtis Kurt Hennig's son. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's what I was mixing up. So, anyway. okay. Anyway. Stu- soft. So, mystery, to, mystery soft. To win a stun gun ladder match, one must <laughs> not... barreling be... ahead. I appreciate it. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm just going to try to dig, I'm trying to dig up. Um, so, to win a stun gun ladder match, you must first get the stun gun and then use it. You can't just pull down it and then that's it. Like all right, other ladder, yeah. all other ladder matches in the history of the world. No, mm-hmm. this is this is not like that. Essentially, makes it an on a pole match. Yeah, it's it's a very um, obtuse on a pole match. So um, the story of this is obviously that Goldberg um, is angry with the Hall and he wants to be able to use the stun gun. They also did a number on Goldberg's knee before the show, mm. which hate that. Yeah, I was not a fan of that. And I hate when you beat up a wrestler before a match and they're already crippled on the way. Unless the unless they do what WWE did where they turned into an angle throughout the whole night and they busted each no, other don't open. Do this Daniel Bryan. Don't do the Daniel Bryan thing. No, but do you know the way Undertaker and Austin where they you know they were both bleeding coming out? Oh, okay, yes. I thought that was that cool. That wasn't really an injury. Like they're not gimpy for the rest of the night. No, but it's a first blood match and they're both bleeding. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. You know. But as as we've discovered on this show, Undertaker loves to enter 
first blood matches while already being cut. He over. does. It's like his thing. So we we'll just have to thing. Keep, yeah, we have to keep an eye on that because that man loves to just bleed randomly. So fair enough. Um, okay, so look, Goldberg, 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 <laughs> and booking him in a ladder match for about twenty minutes should work. But he's also in there with, now, admittedly, with someone who is kind of past his prime and also, you know. You know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but, you know. It is, but it is still Scott Hall, the man who had probably one of the mm. best ladder matches of all time up until what a ladder match meant change, you know, changed. But he did kind right. of define it for, for like five years. until Actually, actually, he would, st- at this time, the ladder match hadn't been redefined yet because it wouldn't no, happen. This, on, well, it wouldn't ha- no, no, when no, did no. when was when does TLC that when was the first? So the first real ladder match, which we haven't got to, which we will when we go back to WWF, was in No Mercy 1999 in October, and that, that oh, okay. was the Terry Invitational Tournament. Yes, Tiff. Okay, okay, okay. The Terry gotcha. Invitational Tournament, and that's gotcha. when that, that that's when Edge and Christian and the Hardys redefine a ladder match. So at this point. Right. Scott Hall actually has the honor of really kind of being the guy who helped engineer what at that point. Unless was you talk, damage. unless you talk to Bret Hart. But Bret Hart, can, you know, Bret Hart's Bret Hart. It's it's a, apparently at the point of contention. Bret Hart claims that he came up with the idea for a ladder match and that Shawn Michaels stole it from him. Look, I don't care who came up with it. I'm saying they redefined it. They made it what it, yes. what what it was, and they're having that reputation. So this was very smart, actually, and having Goldberg who. You know, immediately was known for having 30 second matches. Um, right. Have this kind of match was very impressive. So fair play to Scott Hall for actually probably carrying this because he probably was carrying it. Um, but yeah, um, Goldberg won, got the W and that was it. So what did you, again, this wasn't, this was kind of the main event by, it kind of had to be, but it didn't really feel like a main event. It didn't feel like it was worthy of, you know, our attention as in a Starcade or something. But then Starcade is mm-hmm. the WrestleMania, so that's kind of a bad comparison. So, it, so it, didn't like of, a uh, is, it didn't feel like a backlash. This didn't it didn't feel like a backlash. That's what I was gonna show. say. Is this yeah. is this supposed to be a backlash to a Starcade essentially? Yeah, yeah, kinda sorta. Like the weird thing about WWE is where you anything you watch at WrestleMania, you knew you were gonna get a backlash in some way. It was gonna kind of bleed over. With WCW it was less that, you know, like because everything was kind of faction based, it would usually be mm. something along that line. But this was one of the this was one of the weird carryovers where, yeah, Goldberg wants his revenge. So it was kind of an outlier in that sense. But yeah, this is supposed to be a backlash pay per view, and it really doesn't. Like you compare WrestleMania nineteen ninety nine to Backlash nineteen ninety nine, Backlash is a better show, like in loads of ways. Right. Um, which we'll get to at some point because I actually really like Backlash 1999. Um, this is not. This is not as good as Star K98, but, you know, it's not bad either. I thought the way they booked this match made sense. Uh, the spots were good. Scott Hall does a great job. Goldberg looks very possible. Looks like he can actually hang in another match, which is impressive. And here's this the thing. This was a fun match. Like I, I, I know that like you thought going into it when you saw this on the card, you were going to be like, David, why? Yeah. Like, this honestly, was actually in my this mind. This is actually pretty good, yeah. This is what I enjoy. And, you know, the, the we keep saying stun gun. I should say that they, other than Michael Buffer, they called it a, a cattle prod throughout the night, which is mm. probably for, like, legal reasons, I would imagine. Well, um, they've kind of gone the way of the wayside, by the way of the wayside, or whatever the turn of phrase is. Because I remember in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, like, stun guns were a big thing. Like, kids would, like, get yeah. them as, like, contraband, yeah. and they would do like presentations on them in school and stun themselves thinking that it would give them extra wait, points with the teachers. Wait, like, hold for on. whatever reason, they were a hold pop on. culture thing. Hold on, go back yeah. for a second. What? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Is that an American? Did you... <laughs> America's weird, man. You guys are strange. Americans... <laughs> I know guys... I know of at least I know at least two instances where somebody did a presentation on a stun gun and they thought it'd be a great idea during the presentation to illustrate by stunning themselves with the stun gun or the cattle prod. So this was like, I don't know, maybe just I knew some interesting people, but this seemed to be a weird fad in the late night, like early two thousands going around. And I don't, you don't hear much about them. Now we got the, the tasers that shoot. You don't really hear much about the, the full size cattle prods being used or anything. 
That's anymore. probably a good thing, Dave. But you know what I like? <laughs> points, I miss them. Is what I'm saying. I've only because I remember growing up thinking, oh, I, I wonder if when I'm like that age, I'll 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 do it to myself as well. Like, and then I they just weren't around. You sound sad, boy. Though <laughs> <laughs> I was sad. I want to experience. I look. I like pain sometimes, and I wanted to experience what it was. I guess. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna circle this back around here real quick. Um, <clears throat> so basically. I miss, Yo, this uh, is like, I, miss this, I, I have I have the same pulse <laughs> as the time you said you smelled Ted DiBiase Jr. and told him, just like what what's going on, man? You know, America's weird. <laughs> weird stuff happens there, and the whole world is just like, what are you doing? I don't but know you which know what one I mean. Like, you, it, we, no, all, I don't. we only have the ones that shoot. No, <laughs> I don't, don't know what you mean. Don't. I mean, we have, we have the ones that shoot nowadays. You don't see them with the holding off the batons. We don't like, either. Like we don't these. have we don't have these in Ireland. Our guards like have little. Sticks. What do you mean? You have you have you have cattle. You have cattle. You have cattle. Yeah, but, you have, but we you don't have... we don't cattle prod people. <laughs> well, right. Well, understood. Now, now, do you think that they were? Because I always wanted to believe that they were really really using the electricity from the stun guns. You think they were they were really stunning Goldberg, right? Like they were really shocking him. Uh, no, nah, I was think a, so. wasn't. It I think it was all. I think it was all work. What? Yeah. No, it it's not it work. Be. Yeah, it was a work. No. Yeah, everything's it's Goldberg. A he's a tough. He's a tough NFL player. Well, to be fair, like he's Goldberg, gotta... would, Goldberg would smash his arm open, like legit, because he hit the wrong part of a car like a couple of months later on. So maybe, but I don't. I think we are talking about the guy. So you don't think even when he got stunned, you don't think it was he was like, all right, you need to stun me for real. If I I'm think gonna lose this I think title maybe because I think, I'm so into. I don't know. My character. I, I think maybe the first time, possibly. Definitely. In You're this welcome, movie. ladies and gentlemen. Not only do I not know whose father is who, I also was convinced up until today that the stun gun was more than a prop. Next week on the Wrestling Rewind, we'll cover how I thought the electrocution match was a real electrocution. It's still real to Dave, damn it. It's still real to Dave. Apparently. <laughs> but hey, that just shows you what a good job they did, right? They actually believe you. Had, I don't had know. Down, I so. don't know. Or I was just, you know, <laughs> 10 years old. <laughs> Fair. Um, look, I thought this overall. I learned a lot today. I learned did. a lot on this podcast today about life. You did. Well, that's the main life, thing. That's about, what we try. About gimmicks. <laughs> that's what we try. We try. Um, okay. So look, to wrap up the show, I'm going to give it a grade that's going to seem unfair, but it's not. I'm going to give it a C plus. Oh, 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 Cold. well, there we go. Okay. It's definitely it's, a C show. Yeah. For sure. It, here's the thing, right? With a bit of tweaking, this could be a pro proper B. Okay. You know what this is like, right? So Ireland has a theme park, our hmm. only theme park. It's called Tato Park. It's it's for crisps. Of course it is. Um, it's for what? For crisps. Or, or for chips. For what? Chips, you guys call what them are chips. Crisps? Oh, oh, chips. Chips. potato, potato chips. We call them crisps. Wait, hold right. on. Let me just let me just focus back in. You have a theme park that's specifically for potato chips. Yeah. yeah All right, look, carry on. I don't. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, look. America's weird. You're right. Please continue. <laughs> Man, what did you expect? Come on, like for Guinness. No, actually, I just realized that. I, I, I just. Realized, I would like a. Right. I would like a theme park for so Guinness. Would have, so would I. Anyway, right. A so, log flume. Rides on right. the Guinness. So, so I went there. Extra, extra stout. So I went there a couple of a couple of months ago after the. Fourth we actually block. have a theme park for chocolate. So what am I talking about? Yeah, Hershey yeah. Park is unreal, dude. Yeah. I love Hershey Park. Yeah, anyway, um, I went there anyway. when I was I went there when I was nine. So actually, around the same time with this pay per view. So, anyway, um, yeah. So did you get my, tased while you were there? <laughs> no, I didn't. But my point is, my point on this is, Ireland has this theme park, right? And it has the all the recruitments of a pro of a proper team park, like the infrastructure we have. Wait, pretty why good... do you call it fish and chips if then you call chips crisps? Why isn't it fish and crisps? Because chips are French fries. And and but crisps are still a gang. No, okay, hold on. Right, so you guys call potato chips. Sorry, we you guys call crisps potato chips, right? Correct. We yes. call French fries chips chips yeah and you so, call the opposite of the bloods crips still that that doesn't change overseas. we don't we don't have bloods or crips oh yeah 
it doesn't no. it's, it doesn't cross continent dude it doesn't cross no. it's no. not an international it's not no. new world order all the way no 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 no, 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 no. they they're pretty much contained in la so la okay. is about seven hours behind us so yeah, we're fine <laughs> anyway that's happens. anyway so basically right on guns we have all this um we have a like pretty much the bare bones of a, of a team park right pretty good roller coaster really good good uh log fl- flume ride all that kind of stuff awesome zoo right <laughs> but but there's no pizzazz there's no you know zazzle it's all very you know needs a bit of a touch needs like a little bit of touch so if you kind of added just a little bits here and there it would be fantastic right and it's not much just a bit of a rearrange it here you know some figures here a bit of dressing up here and there whatever right and that's kind of what it feels like for this show it has it's a workable show it has some pretty good elements in it it's an entertaining show has some great matches but things are kind of all over the place because it's not put together in a way that it holds your attention the entire time that's why i'm giving it such a low grade but mm. i think it's fair if you I compare think, yeah. it to what would be an a plus show like, exactly it's not world war three good I was almost able to pick another pay per view. Wrestling <laughs> journalist, for ten, wrestling journalist for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not Bash at the Beach '95. Good. Okay, fair. It like and look, and there are good WCW shows, right? And I think yes. you you can do worse, and there's so much worse. But this this is a fun show to watch. It's, it's just, a fun it's show. One of those. It's like you got to watch it and be like, all right. I don't really understand why I'm watching it, but I I wasn't not entertained. I didn't yeah, like get I bored agree. and like go I wasn't, do something else. I wasn't mad either. Like I wasn't like I started watching it and I was playing Knights of the Republic, and then I stopped because I actually was more interested in watching the show. And that wow, means it, that's that means compliment. yeah, and that means it was a good show because I'm like actually I'm I'm enjoying this, but the things of nothing meaning anything or just being confused because no one explained anything or no one told you what was going on um that kind of held it back and then also no real stakes but then when it really started firing like i love the chris jericho match because watching chris jericho wrestle at this time is just great um the benoit match was really good despite it being a squash match um the Mm. the fatal four-way with the cruiserweights was unbelievable and then the main event, surprisingly, was like a really decent match. So it had all these great moments, just as I said, like Tato Park. A few bits here and there would bring it up from being a C plus to being a B plus or even an A. This could have been an A show. It just didn't have those little bits that we, mm. you know, you want, right? Like again, you can kind of see how the WDB was able to just run with it. Now, remember, WDB is still winning the war at this point, right? Yes. So, but this was around the time they were going to start losing it. This was around the time of the infamous Raw thing. You I mean, know, WCW was still winning the war. At this yeah, time. sorry, WCW was still occasion. winning. Yeah, exactly. And then um, they do the infamous Giovanni line around this time. Hasn't happened yet, mm-hmm. but you can definitely see that shift changing like drastically changing now as we're going into 1999 so look fair play to wgw for having this great show um the network i'm still shocked that they're that their editing is so good now that i right you know yeah it's it's still really decent and like somebody sh- went in and did this somebody cared enough about this pay-per-view that they went in and they changed this yeah and, and edited things for it's for the better for the better. Here's the thing. If, if WWE wanted to go in and really make it good, they could have... And here's the thing. This I think this would be a great idea. Have deep someone... Fake. Well, no, have someone do a do preview. A, do a deep fake. Well, no, do, do a deep fake. On, no, no, I want this. I want this for old wrestling pay-per-views. Somebody out there is probably trying to like render this in Adobe right now, but just for, <laughs> I want to get some deep fake matches done for, for real. No, in all seriousness, what I think would be a good thing to do, even for content for them, is to have someone from WWE in the archives just doing a preview mm-hmm. or recap of the storylines for all these shows. Mm-hmm. Like That'd be cool. Or if, like, if it's kind of like we talk about with, it'd be nice if we could see Heat 
before the pay-per-view. Maybe if you tied yeah. this in and tied this there's in, a link exactly. to watch the the Nitro before or the Thunder before the just, show. Just something to kind of weave these together because obviously at the time you'd be watching it week to week, but because it's 20 years, all that supplemental stuff isn't there. So that would be a cool thing to do. Like with WWE, because the way the production is done or was done at this point, it was all so clear and so good that if you just had he it's a natural thing with this there was not you know it was just like okay we're going to run through real quick, real quick but how cool would it be to have you know well i know a lot of them are in AEW, but you could have someone from their booker t maybe because he's actually on the show mm -hmm. and just have booker t going hey or even rick flair you know just hire rick flair for a couple of days to do this <laughs> and just be like hey so here's what was going on at the time here's the story and i'm blah, blah blah and then you watch it oh yeah that'd be cool you know, like they just, do on DVDs where Edge like absolutely. will narrate and so absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you. I think that would be a really cool idea. And um, WWE, you can send my check in the post. So <laughs> if you use that idea, but I think it's a, I think it's a cool idea, and I think that would really kind of add to that because ten. And remember, I think it's a lot easier for them to do this with WWE content because they were there yeah. and they were producing it. With WCW stuff, it's kind of harder. So this stuff would even be better for people trying to get back in. And you know that that's what I do. Honestly, I think that's yeah, something that and they should work. Paychecks in. for some of those guys that could use a surgery or two. Yeah, never hurt. You use a bit of, yeah. exactly. Use a bit of it, and because like, look, what else are the you know do, now would be a good time to do it because like you know they're at home. Yeah. And hey, right? bring so, the camera anyway. back while you're at it. Oh, I swear to God, Dave, if if we if we have to watch a pay per view <laughs> match with Calipro, I'm blaming you. So I'm blaming you. <laughs> I'll be so I'll be so happy. I'll be doing a Twitter countdown every day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so guys, that's gonna be it. We kind of went it over a little bit this week, but I think it was warranted. Good to be back um doing a live show. We're gonna make them more regular now that we're still working out a time slot that works. It will probably be around this time, uh either Tuesday or Friday. That seems to be what we're aiming for now. Um going up on the true painting channel. Two shows went up on the True Penny channel. Everything goes up on nerdtoknowmedia.com. All the Spotify links and everything is archived over on this channel, but also Nerd to Know Media as well. If you like what we do here, please do support us. Um, click that link for the Kofi or you can PayPal us. That also helps too. And um, yeah, leave a comment, subscribe and tell all your friends because uh, this is the only wrestling podcast done by people who do not hate wrestling. That's important. So, guys, we'll be back next week here on the Nerd to Know Media channel, the Wrestling Rewind channel, and, of course, Phoenix 92.5 FM and the True Penny channel. Guys, we'll see you then. Bye.